Good Tuesday to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 28th day of March. It is day 87 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend some time together in the pages of the Bible. And we're going to let the Bible do what the Bible does and point our hearts to the one who is the living Word of God. The one alone who has the words of life. So we come. From all around the world we gather here. Men and women far and wide. Come to warm their hearts by the fires of God's love. For God is love. And today, we're in the book of Judges, chapters 4 and 5. Then we'll go to Psalm 39 and 41, and we will finish in 1 Corinthians 13. Wonderful. Judges 4. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Hazor, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Hashareth Hogaim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Deborah, the wife of Lopodith, was a prophet who judged Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abonoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out ten thousand warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied, I will go with you. But you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, and ten thousand warriors went up with him. Deborah also went with him. Now Heber the Kenite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of Zanaim near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abonoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called for all nine hundred of his iron chariots and all his warriors, and they marched from Hashareth Hagoim to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his ten thousand warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way to Hashareth Hogaim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Jabin of Hazor. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Come in, don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. Please give me some water, he said. I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anyone comes and asks if there is anyone here, say no. But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and tent peg in her hand. Then she drove the tent peg through his temple and into the ground, and so he died. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him. She said, Come 
and I will show you the man you are looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead, with the tent peg through his temple. So on that day Israel saw God defeat Jabin the Canaanite king. And from that time on Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until they finally destroyed him. Judges 5 On that day Deborah and Barak, son of Abonoam, sang this song. Israel's leaders took charge and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord. Listen, you kings, pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing to the Lord. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you set out from Sa'ir and marched across the fields of Edom, the earth trembled and the cloudy skies poured down rain. The mountains quaked in the presence of the Lord, the God of Mount Sinai. In the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, people avoided the main roads, and travelers stayed on winding pathways. There were few people left in the villages of Israel, until Deborah arose, as a mother of Israel. When Israel chose new gods, war erupted in the city gates. Yet not a shield or spear could be seen among 40,000 warriors in Israel. My heart is with the commanders of Israel, with those who volunteered for war. Praise the Lord. Consider this, you who ride on fine donkeys, you who sit on fancy saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road. Listen to the village musicians gathered at the watering holes. They recount the righteous victories of the Lord and the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord marched down to the city gates. Wake up, Deborah, wake up! Wake up, wake up, and sing a song! Arise, Barak, lead your captives away, son of Abonoam. Down from Tabor marched the few against the nobles. The people of the Lord marched down against the mighty warriors. They came down from Ephraim, a land that once belonged to the Amalekites. They followed you, Benjamin, with your troops. From Makir the commanders marched down. From Zebulun came those who carry a commander's staff. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah and Barak. They followed Barak rushing into the valley. But in the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Why did you sit at home among the sheepfolds to hear the shepherds whistle for their flocks? Yes, in the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Gilead remained east of the Jordan. And why did Dan stay home? Asher sat unmoved at the seashore, remaining in his harbors. But Zebulun risked his life, as did Naphtali on the heights of the battlefield. The kings of Canaan came and fought at Tanakh, near Megiddo Springs, but they carried off no silver treasures. The stars fought from heaven, the stars in their orbits fought against Sisera. The Kishon River swept them away, that ancient torrent the Kishon. March on with courage, my soul. Then the horse's hooves hammered the ground, the galloping, galloping of Sisera's mighty steeds. Let the people of Moroz be cursed, said the angel of the Lord. Let them be utterly cursed, because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty warriors. Most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. May she be blessed above all women who live in tents. Sisera asked for water, and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him yogurt. Then with her left hand, she reached for a tent peg, and with her right hand, for the workman's hammer, she struck Sisera with the hammer, crushing his head. With a shattering blow, she pierced his temple, he sank, he fell, he lay still at her feet. And where he sank, there he died. From the window, Sisera's mother looked out. Through the window, she watched for his return, saying, Why is this chariot so long in coming? Why don't we hear the sound of chariot wheels? Her wise women answer, and she repeats these words to herself. They must be dividing the captured plunder, with a woman or two for every man. There'll be colorful robes for Sisera, and colorful embroidered robes for me, yes, 
The plunder will include colorful robes embroidered on both sides. Lord, may all your enemies die like Sisera, but may those who love you rise like the sun in all its power. Then there was peace in the land for forty years. Psalm 39 I said to myself, I will watch what I do and not sin in what I say. I will hold my tongue when the ungodly are around me. But as I stood there in silence, not even speaking of good things, the turmoil within me grew worse. The more I thought about it, the hotter I got, igniting a fire of words. Lord, Remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. We are merely moving shadows, and all our busy rushing ends to nothing. We heap up wealth, not knowing who will spend it. And so, Lord... Where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. Rescue me from my rebellion. Do not let fools mock me. I am silent before you. I won't say a word, for my punishment is from you. But please stop striking me. I am exhausted by the blows from your hand. When you discipline us for our sins, you consume like a moth what is precious to us. Each of us is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cries for help. Don't ignore my tears, for I am your guest, a traveler passing through, as my ancestors were before me. Leave me alone so I can smile again, before I am gone and exist no more. Psalm 41 For the Choir Director, a Psalm of David Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them back when they are sick and restores them to health. O oh Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. But my enemies say nothing but evil about me. How soon will he die and be forgotten, they ask. They visit me as if they were my friends, but all the while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. All who hate me whisper about me, imagining the worst. He has some fatal disease, they say. He will never get out of that bed. Even my best friend, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Lord, have mercy on me. Make me well again, so I can pay them back. I know you are pleased with me, for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. You have preserved my life because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. 1 Corinthians 13 If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, 
never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Amen. In our reading in Psalm 39 today, we hear these words, We are merely moving shadows, and all our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth, not knowing who will spend it. And so, Lord, where do I put my hope? Such sobering words are echoed in the verse of Shakespeare, where we read this, Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time, and to all our yesteryears have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Mere moving shadows, poor players strutting themselves about the stage, days filled with sound and fury, all of it meaning nothing. Whether it is the pursuit of the arts or power, prestige, pleasures, making a name for yourself, all of it in and of itself is laden with nihilism. It all renders down to nothing. Apart from this, apart from love, Paul tells us here very clearly that love is what animates our days with meaning. Love imbues every gesture in life with the eternal. And love's kind was revealed to us in the flesh, in the life of Jesus. And so we look to him, friends. We look to him as the model of our life in love. It is a self-giving life, a radically forgiving life, a co-suffering life. A life that is patient and kind, not jealous, not boastful, not proud, nor is it rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable, and it keeps no record of wrongs. It doesn't rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. It never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through everything. So by his grace, dear friends, let us be reminded today that love can deliver us from a meaningless life and that God himself has gifted us with his love. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. 
Bless the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, dailyradiobible.com is where we can be found anytime. And it's a place where you can sign up for our upcoming newsletter. There's a few days left before that newsletter finds your inbox. And we'd love for you to get it. And while you're in that sign-up kind of mood, if you haven't done this already, let me encourage you to sign up to our Facebook page. We're using that space more and more to connect with you. We've got some stuff that's happening there daily with Heather's new book, Discovering Jesus. She's been posting her daily devotionals there that are found in that very book. And I got to tell you, they are such a blessing. And I love the prayer that she offers at the end of each of those devotionals. So check that out at the Daily Radio Bible Facebook page. And last of all, let me just encourage you to get outside if you're able. Enjoy God's beautiful creation. Spend time. Enjoy more of the simple pleasures in life with those that you love. And be grateful. That's my plan. Lord willing. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. I'm also going to be here tomorrow to do the same thing. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about it. All right. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.